Well, each child develops differently. They go through what we call milestones. So there's a sequence of events where the bones, the ligaments, the tendons, the brain, the nerves all work together and develop and evolve at a different rate depending on that individual child. There's then usually a period of consolidation where they get used to um, that particular level of activity, that level of development. Um, but not every child goes through every sequence uh, and that's okay. I mean my daughter for example, she went, to, uh, she went straight from sitting to standing. She spent virtually no time um, kneeling and, and crawling, but that's okay for her. Everybody's different, every child is different. So while theoretically there is a sequence, it's okay if they miss a few steps, so to speak. Everybody's child will, will evolve at a different rate. But the walking usually develops as the milestones develop, which are the sequences that the body develops through, sort of physical sequences. And it's usually based on different reflexes as the child uh, evolves and, and grows. Um, so initially we'll start with a bent type posture in the fetal position, uh, which is a flexed posture. And then the child develops an extensor posture, an extensor reflexes. So for example, when they're lying on their tummy lifting their head, for example. Uh, but when they start to walk and stand, what happens is that they tend to walk with a, a flexor gait. In other words, the hips go up and down and you get this stomping gait because the body hasn't learned, of course, to walk properly and the foot hasn't developed enough yet to enable it to do that. So you tend to find this stomping gait. So of course, shoes need to be designed with that in mind. There's no point having an adult shoe for a young child. Uh, it needs to be designed for what the child needs and how they walk. Typically, um, as the body evolves through the milestones and the, these reflex patterns start to uh, mature with the child, then uh, what happens is that the ability to be able to walk more like an adult increases. Um, but the foot itself develops quite a bit. Uh, if we can just explain using our friend here. Um, this is the arch on the inside of the foot, this is the medial arch, um, and everybody has what's called a subtalar joint, and that's a joint that sits just in front and underneath of the ankle joint. And it evolves and develops as the child matures, uh, and uh, what it does is allow the foot to flatten um, and, and rotate in this sort of position here. So what happens is that when the child takes weight through the foot, the foot should flatten to enable it to absorb shock and then as you push off it should then reform the arch to push forward. So as this um, joint develops and evolves then so it enables the child to move more like an adult but that doesn't really happen until six or seven um, and really fully um, the, the walking doesn't fully mature until the child is 12 or 13 years old but a lot of it is based around the ability of this subtalar joint to develop so of course when we're designing shoes, that needs to be borne in mind um, so that the shoe is relevant for how that joint has developed uh, and how the child walks. So children's shoes need to be really soft, certainly when they first start to walk. And the reason for that is because their feet are soft. Um, they're not fully developed yet. Uh, the bones are still relatively soft. The ligaments certainly haven't developed and the muscles certainly haven't either. So consequently, the foot isn't designed to take weight. So because the foot is soft and, and, and flexible and mobile, so the shoe should be as well. This is a shoe from uh, 60 odd years ago and you can see how stiff that forefoot is. Um, and we now know that the consequences of that are, um, are representing themselves when, when people get older and they're getting foot problems and knee problems and so on as a result. So what we now do is have more of a super soft shoe where you can see how the shoe is far more flexible, more mobile and really that's how the foot is designed to be. Uh, and, and from a design point of view it's important that that's how our shoes are for children when they first start to walk. So it's really important that the, uh, the shoe is fitted properly to the child's foot to try and prevent problems later on. Um, one of the things that you often find is that if the forefoot of the shoe is too stiff and rigid, that causes their toes to become stiff, in particular the big toe. So what that means is that as they're taking weight through the foot and they're levering through the forefoot, they can't because there's too much stiffness. So what they tend to do is turn the foot out so that as they're walking they roll onto the inside part of the foot. That can then cause aching in the, in the arch area and in the foot as a whole, but also in the shin and the knee, and actually as far up as the, uh, the hip and the lower back. It's very important as part of a child's development that they improve their balance and coordination. Uh, if I just use my, uh, 
leg here to try and explain. We all have strain gauges around the ligaments and tendons around the ankle uh, and their job is to tell the brain the pressure that's going through the foot. Um, what happens is, is if we have a shoe for example that is very stiff and rigid, these strain gauges switch off. That then compromises balance and coordination. So it's really important that we have the right shoe for the right foot um, for a number of reasons, but also to help improve balance and coordination. It's critical for a child as they mature and grow older. So it's really important that children move. Uh, the reason that's important is because as they move, their muscles, ligaments, bones and tendons all develop and get stronger. If we don't move, those strain gauges don't get stimulated. So consequently the foot can be weak, it can be stiff, or actually it can be hypermobile, um, and consequently that can lead to problems later on. So it's really important that kids are active, that they're mobile, um, and that while they've always got lots of choice in terms of um, playing on games in front of computers and one thing or another, and that's fine, they need to be active as well. We need to make sure their feet and lower limbs in particular are strong and well developed. <laughs>